everyone has heard that they need to exercise. So in today's video, I'm not going to tell you that. Instead, I'm going to tell you some things that will completely change the way you think about exercise and make it easier for you to exercise than ever before. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Siddharth Warrior and welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about neuroscience and everything. If you haven't subscribed so far, what are you waiting for? It means a lot to me and you will learn everything you need to know about your brain, about your health and how to live a better life. We blame modern life for how little we exercise. But this is not entirely true. Even back in the day, centuries ago, in ancient Greece and in China, there are records where people have realized how important exercise is. So people who didn't exercise were dying faster than those who exercised. Coming much closer to our time, in 1950s, there was a study in London that showed that bus conductors lived longer than bus drivers. Can you guess why? And a few years later, another study showed that postmen who delivered letters lived longer than postal clerks who worked in the office. Again, I wonder why. So clearly exercise can help you live longer. But what are the diseases that exercise prevents or reduces your risk? It's a long list. Basically, every organ in your body is benefited with exercise. For example, in your heart and lungs, exercise reduces the risk of getting heart attacks, high blood pressure, COPD, and even blood clots. It reduces the risk of metabolic diseases like diabetes, insulin resistance, and obesity. It makes your bones and joints stronger, so it reduces the symptoms of fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic fatigue syndrome, and it even reduces cancer and depression. Yes, depression what is considered as the epidemic of today's times. In 2024, a study published in the BMJ Journal showed how exercise is as good as therapy and medication. So, exercise can prevent physical and mental problems. So, why don't we do it? Why is it so difficult for all of us to exercise? The simple reason is that our current environment is wired against movement. Think about it. All the things that we associate with comfort, with privilege, with being wealthy is against physical movement. Whether it is sitting down all the time, whether it is having a car and a driver, whether it is having people who bring food to you, whether it is having somebody in the house to take care of cleaning and cooking, Anything that makes you move around is the first thing to go when you advance in life. So long story short, anyone who climbs a social ladder ends up moving lesser and lesser and ironically gets sicker. And ultimately, the only jobs we end up doing are cognitive ones. That is planning, thinking, solving problems with our brain. But we forget that the brain is part of the body. And the brain can only function as long as the body is doing well. And the day that our body stops working, our brain can't do anything much. So we have to keep using our body to keep our brain sharp, which means we have to exercise. So what is exercise? The core concept of exercising is movement. Exercise is not about having six pack abs. Exercise is not about having toned muscles or looking really good in a tight t-shirt. All of these things, people do because it makes them feel happy. There is pleasure from social validation. But the only truly health related reason to exercise is so that you can move better, faster and for a longer period of time. All the physical things that you want to do, you should be able to do. Whether it's running after your child or picking up your grandchild or lifting a heavy weight in the house or have sex or help somebody from falling down. All of these things require physical strength and agility, which is what exercise brings to the table. And the other important reason to exercise is to prevent your body from getting injured. You know that accidents can happen anytime. Whether that accident is a physical one, like a fall or a road accident, or it could be an infectious one, like a COVID infection. Exercise makes your body strong and prevents it from crumbling when something like this happens. Whether it is improving your immunity against infection or making your bones and joints strong so that you don't get a fracture when you fall or if you lift something heavy, you don't sprain your back. For all of these practical reasons, you need to exercise. And the sooner you start doing it, the better it is for your body. Because remember that once something goes wrong, it is so much harder to get your body back 
into its peak physical state. So if you're listening to this video and you've already started exercising, great, don't stop. But if you haven't started exercising yet, I'm going to now tell you what is the easiest way for you to just start exercising. Now that you've understood that exercise is about movement, think about what does it take to move? What does it take for you to get up and walk? You need your brain to be working fine. You need your brain to be connected with your body. Your muscles should be strong enough. Your bones should be hard enough. Your joints need to be flexible enough. Your body should have a good metabolic system to take energy from food. And you need a good cardiovascular system. That is a heart that pumps blood and arteries that take blood all over the body. All of these things come together to help you move. And so when you exercise, what you are doing is you're making all these different parts of your body stronger. So an ideal all round workout will improve all these different parts of your body. Now, some people will say that I only go to the gym. I only want to build muscle. Unfortunately, this does not provide a holistic improvement of your health because while strength training does improve your muscle and bone strength and to some extent improves your cardiac fitness, it does not do much to improve your joint flexibility or your aerobic capacity. Whereas somebody else might say that I only go running and that is great for their aerobic and cardiac fitness, but they would still need to do some work on their strength training and joints. So if I had to give you an ideal exercise regimen for a week, this is how I would do it. You need three sessions of zone two cardiac activity, which means you will do something that increases your heart rate to 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. Now on, on average for most people, this would be between 120 to 140 beats a minute. Spending 180 minutes in a week in this zone two helps improve your basic endurance and boosts your metabolism and increases fat burning. This is very good for preventing metabolic disorders. Now, apart from this, two to three sessions of strength training per week is ideal where you work out different muscle groups in your body with the main focus being on your core axial muscles. That is your shoulders, chest, back, abs, glutes, thighs. This would improve your muscle strength, your core body strength and improve your basic metabolic rate. Apart from this, daily stretching for 10 to 15 minutes is mandatory for your joint flexibility. If you can do yoga for this, that's even better. And one session of HIIT, that is high intensity interval training, would be great where your heart rate goes up to zone 4 or zone 5 intermittently. Now, everyone has their own way of figuring out how to do these different exercises. Some people might play badminton or go for a dance class to get their HIIT workout. For their zone 2, some people prefer walking in the garden, others would hit a treadmill or others might go for a casual swim. You need to pick whatever works for you, but understand the overall scheme of why should you exercise and what are the different points that you need to hit each week for a complete all-round health development. Now, the last point is, is there a wrong way to exercise? The short answer is no. The only time you exercise wrongly is if you put too much demand on your body that your body can't meet. Because remember that all parts of the system can get overwhelmed if you put too much pressure, whether that's cognitive pressure on your brain or physical pressure on your bone or your muscles. So make sure that you never put more stress on yourself than you can handle. And if you follow this rule, no exercise is wrong for you. I'm planning another video soon where I have a few exercise hacks that you can do to make exercise more fun. Like what kind of music should you listen to and what time should you exercise. So if you want to see that, hit the subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed this video and you find it useful. Go exercise and tell me how it's going for you. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone. Take care.